Dust Devil is a 1992 release supernatural thriller directed by Richard Stanley. Yes, uh, and don't forget to subscribe down below if you like what you're watching. It's a strange one. Um, like I said, su- sort of supernatural mysticism, black magic stuff going on. Uh, so it stars Robert John Burke as a as a hitchhiker, basically, who just travels around killing the people that picks him up. So <laughs> it's just not very grateful. Yeah, we, we covered The Hitcher a few weeks ago, which is kind of a similar premise, but whereas Rutger Hauer's character in that kind of just does it for fun, doesn't he, really? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Sick in the head. Yeah. Um, this, guy, this guy is obviously, he's some sort of demon who, who you know consumes the souls of his victims and leaves sort of mystical murals behind drawn in their blood. Um, so, yeah, lots more going on there. So, right at the start, you know, we, we, he kills, kills a victim, um, and obviously the police are investigating that, and then we, then we see uh, Chelsea Field's character has just left her husband, so he's out on the road, and unsurprisingly he bumps into the hitchhiker, picks him up. Yeah, kind of a relationship ensues between them, so he, doesn't, he decides not to kill her straight away anyway. And that's it really, yeah, it's, it's kind of... It's, it's the story of those two, and it... I don't know, he's almost sympathetic at some points, this, this guy. Because there is a line he says at the, near the end, isn't it, because he says that he gets lonely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you, you've, got, you've got him and, and Chelsea feel hanging around, um, having this relationship and whatnot. And then you've got her husband, who's trying to find her, and then the cop, obviously, trying to, trying to find this killer. And that's it, really. It is a strange one, mm. this. I mean, so... Well, again, you know, as you mentioned the Hitcher we covered a few mm. weeks ago. We also covered um, Hardware, yes. which was also directed by Richard Stanley. And mm. I think someone in the comments for that film said suggested yeah. we do Dust Devil. Yeah. I mean, I have I've, I've seen this a few times in the past. Um, I actually like this more than Hardware. Really? Does that surprise you? <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, no, it doesn't at all. <laughs> um, I, I think Hardware is a really good film. I think I think Richard Stanley is a really interesting filmmaker. I think. I think why I like this one, I, and I feel this is, is a better film, is because he's, he's on his home turf. Mm. I mean, Richard Stanley is from South Africa. I think um, his, if you don't look at a lot of his kind of documentary films, there's quite a lot of mysticism going on mm. in his work. I mean, there is mysticism in hardware, definitely. His mother was a, um, I think she was an anthropologist, mm. and so she studied a lot about witchcraft and, yeah. and things like that, and those, those lines are clearly in this film. And I think there is, I, while I don't think there's a, I mean, I know... If anyone knows about Richard Stanley, you know he's had a troubled history when it comes to filmmaking, and I think this film is no exception. It no. had a few problems in the editing stages. It was kind of pulled apart. It was put back together again. He didn't get to um, film everything that he wanted to film. and Exactly. You know, so. so I think he's, unfortunately, because I think he is an interesting filmmaker, He doesn't. his films maybe aren't always as they should be in his eyes. Um, so I think this film does have some interesting. I think there's slightly more depth going on here than there is in Hardware. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Hardware is, is as he, I think he said himself, it's kind of a, a an okay rip off of Terminator and Alien. <laughs> um, I mean, this this itself is a kind of it's, we've been to this territory before. Yeah. We've seen The Hitcher and things like that. I mean, I think there's a, an almost um, it's, although it's nothing like The Exorcist. There is that. I think the the character in here, the Dust Devil. He is like a, either a shapeshifter or he's someone that has been possessed, mm. and that's why he's having to, you know, almost have to having to kill these things. It's like he is. It's just this, the the sort of the actor Robert John Burke that we see on the screen. Uh, the character is is a shell for this yeah, demon, like a vessel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's being like travelled around, mm. and he kind of has to. It's not him killing; it's, it's the demon mm. doing the killing. Um, and I think also it is in an interesting place. It was filmed in Namibia. Um, in Africa, obviously, I think at that point it just found its independence, or it just it just gained independence, so they were able to film there. So the two leads here, are Wendy and Ben, um, played by Chelsea Field and um, Max Mokai, I think that's pronounced correctly. They are so Wendy is is kind of she's being um, she's she's running away from an abusive relationship, and he himself, and it doesn't get mentioned a lot, but it gets mentioned a couple of times. I think his his family, his son was killed. Mm. And so then his family broke down. And there are obviously uh, kind of race relations going on in the film. So there's kind of sexual and racial politics in, in the background of this film, um, which I think you know, leads for, for an interesting uh, depth to it. Mm. Plus, like hardware, there's a lot of kind of <clears throat> hallucinogenic moments going yeah, on. It's definitely. quite trippy. 
Um, hardware also had a lot of those kind of you know religious imagery flashing on the screen, and this does too. Maybe not as much, although there are a couple of dream sequences in here which are quite which are quite trippy. Uh, the whole film was like yellow. Yeah. Um, obviously, the character, uh, the Dust Devil himself, is very much he's dressed like the guy in um, in Hardware, yep. and much like Richard Stanley himself. Uh, you know the long coat yeah. and, and, I mean, the, and the hat. He's not got. He's almost like a spaghetti western type of character. It's with very it. It spaghetti looks like western. A western. Yeah, uh, I think if, than... you're right. But I think uh, Once Upon a Time in the West uh, was a kind of a, an inspiration for this for mm. this film. And I think there are a few others he listed. Um, there's the film Simon of the Desert, uh, directed by Louis Bunuel. Mm -hmm. uh, that's another one that was that he also referenced. Um, I mean, I think the. Clint Eastwood's man with no name character is sort of this. The Dust Devil was almost like a continuation of that character. Had that character been possessed by a demon, shall we say? Exactly. <laughs> There's another film this reminds me of. I don't know if you've seen this one. Uh, it's a film called The Shout. Have you ever seen The Shout? Don't think so. The Shout is a late 70s film uh, directed by uh, Jerzy Skolomowski, who's a Polish filmmaker, but it's a, it's a British film. It, that's really strange. Uh, it's Alan Bates <laughs> and John Hurt and. I found it similar because, although he's not, he's not a serial killer, there are kind of mystical and supernatural elements. I mean, it's right. not a full-on horror film. Mm -hmm. um, it's a strange little piece. Um, I, I don't know, just this film kind of reminded me of that, especially the kind of, I suppose, the mysticism and the supernatural element, yeah, yeah. elements to it. The film has a narrator, and he's kind of like, he himself is kind of a, a mystical character. Mm. He knows more about maybe the, the unknown or, or black magic than, than the police chief who doesn't believe this BS, as he yep. calls it a couple of times. While I don't think, I think as you said in the beginning, it is a strange piece, this. Um, I don't, I think it's kind of, it's, it's, it's not the most original story no. on the top of it, but I think there is stuff underneath, mm. which is quite interesting. And obviously if you are a fan of Richard Stanley, you'll, 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 you'll hit those links as well. And, and we spoke about, you know, we spoke about Richard Stanley before. Yeah. I mean, I think he's basically, uh, I mean, he was originally um, started out doing music videos. He mm. came over to, he came over to Britain in, in the eighties, and he did a. Uh, I think he did a couple of Fields of Nephilim, which mm -hmm. is before Public Image Limited, people like that. And I think his films look like they look like kind of very long music yeah, videos. It's yeah. got that style, you know. Obviously, lots of you know strange angles and low angles, and you know things like that. Um, so, uh, I mean, I think he was off, he's often constrained by budget and definitely. things like that. I mean, I think a lot of stuff. I mean, both hardware and Dust Devil. There's lots of stuff that either the studio said he couldn't film. They took pages out because of because of the budget, or they just couldn't film for whatever reason. I think they had a lot of production issues on Dust Devil, like cars breaking down and things like that. He said, yeah, I think the the, the cops Land Rover they had to push it into shots. <laughs> they never actually saw him driving it, yeah, or not not right, a lot, yeah. because it broke down and they couldn't fix it. So they just had to push it into shots. And a lot of the time, so many cars are breaking down that. Rather than have, and they didn't have the facility to film people sat in the car while it was moving. Every time they wanted a conversation by two people who who were in a car, they would have to stop the car, and get out, and have that conversation, right. and then yeah. carry on. So they had to find a reason for them to stop. So um, you know, in that, in that sense, you know, you found very creative ways that you don't really, you know, now with that knowledge and watching it, you think, oh yeah, you probably noticed these things, but. Because you know, because it is filmed in a, well and it looks good, you don't really think about it too much when you're watching. It. No, no, um, I think no, I think you're right. I think he he's managed to. Yeah, you know, I mean they're 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 kind of lowish budget but but yeah. well put together films, mm. and they might not have the most original stories in the world, but I think they're done really well, and mm. I, and, and I've always liked his his work. It's a shame. I mean, I think it's a shame that his career. I mean, it's still good, but that it didn't really kick off. No, he didn't get that. Have. That he didn't get that budget that he no. had a nice big budget no. and, and do something really interesting. But mm. then his film ideas maybe they are slightly too eccentric for yeah. mainstream audiences. I don't know. I think this is I don't think this is as, as cultish as as hardware. Um but I think there's probably a, it clearly is gonna be a following for this, yeah, for this yeah. film. Definitely, as all films probably have. Mm. Uh, no matter how good or bad they are, <laughs> if if you're if if you're more if you're someone who likes maybe more going on, maybe you're more of a fan of hardware, then this might not be for you. But mm. I think if you like if you like hardware from the point of view of being into Richard Stanley's mind and stuff, I think you probably do this I, one. I mean, if you like the the visual style of hardware, I would say Dust Devil was very similar. Definitely, 
Okay. They're quite orange films. Aren't they? <laughs> They're very orange <laughs> films. This one maybe even more so. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but it is literally in the desert, completely. I think yep. it's like I think the desert they're in. I don't remember the name. It's like one of the oldest deserts. It's known as being like mm. one of the oldest deserts uh, in the world. I don't know how it gets that title. I'm sure all deserts are about as old as each other. <laughs> Got to know. Ask a desert expert. I might do that. Um, <laughs> we should also actually say that it is also based on a legend of. There is a. Um, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce his name. <laughs> I'm going to look this up, actually. But, um, so it was based... There was a serial killer on uh, on the loose. Mm. Um, so the, the legend is like a spirit-like serial killer. And it says here, Nadiep. Nadiep. Right, yeah. That look about right. If you say so. <laughs> Someone else might want, to, uh, might want to correct me on correct that. Me, yeah. But it is... So it kind of was based on... A, there's like a legend. Mm. I think there was a serial killing taking place. And they never caught the killer. And then they, they they did track a body down. Uh, there was a, like a shootout, and they dragged this body out of the uh, out of the hills, but it had no head. Right. And they kind of claimed that was the killer. And the fact that it had no head, and they were unable to identify it, it kind of gave it this like legendary status. And that's what this film is based on. And they right. actually there was another film done in the eighties that starred uh, Sean Bean and John Hurt, which was kind of about the same oh. that same legend. Mm. Um, so I, I, I don't know much more about that. You can... Well, I don't know. Cause, so I have this version of it, which apparently is quite hard to get well, hold yeah, of. No, it's, well, yeah, it's limited edition, and yeah, it's, it's yeah. out of print now, and yeah, to pick it up, it's quite expensive. Um, but I mean, it's got five discs in it, one of which is the soundtrack we just mentioned, and it's also got three of his documentaries. I mean, there's a bit of overlap with the, with the hardware release that you've That's got. Right, but, yeah, uh, I think it had voice... Voice of the, of the Moon, moon on it, on there, yeah. uh, but it's also it's got the final cut, which yeah, has just re-edited slightly, and it's got the work print cut, which is slightly longer by a few minutes. Um, but yeah, difficult to difficult to track down. Well, not difficult to find, but expensive if you do want to get it. Um, but there's other versions. I mean, I think it was released. Obviously, that's that's a US disc. Um, it, there was a UK release, but again, I think that's. That's out of print, so again, quite hard to track down. So it's not, I don't think anywhere is particularly easy to find on disc. Yeah, because um, I remember, I remember when I bought it because I because it's uh, subversive cin- subversive cinema. I, mm. I remember buying, I can't remember where from some online store. I bought like six films, all from subversive. Right, they were all equally strange as the others. <laughs> Uh, I think quite a few of them were Australian films. Right, right. I bought like a I can't remember. There was a trilogy I bought, with, mm. which were all Australian films, and they were. I think this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that's nice to know that I have a nice... You do, yeah, hang on to it. Or if you're short of cash, you could stick it on eBay. <laughs> so that was Dust Devil. Um, we hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, leave us a comment in the comments below. Yep, check out some of our other videos. There's some links over there. And uh, come and join us on Twitter and Facebook. And uh, we'll see you again soon for another one.